In this video, we're going to focus on vectors and adding and subtracting vectors. If you remember, a vector has a magnitude and a direction, unlike a scalar which has only a magnitude, no direction. So vector addition is not the same as scalar addition. For vectors, we usually draw arrows to represent them. And if we draw vectors to scale, we mean we are making the length of the arrow proportional to the magnitude of the vector. The longer the arrow, the larger the magnitude. And of course, the direction of the arrow is the direction of the vector. Now let's go over the three ways of adding vectors. Say we want to add these two, vector A and the vector B. The first method for adding vectors is called tail-to-tip method. We can write A plus B with these vector hats. These vector hats only tell you that these two are vectors. Vector A and B do not point to the right. Those are the directions for A and B. To add A and B, we first copy vector A down exactly the same to here. We do the same length, same direction. And then we copy down B over here and put the tail of B at the tip of A. So this is A and that's B. We started here end it there. So the sum of the vector is uh, from here to there. And that's A plus B. A good example would be adding displacements. Displacement is a vector. So for example, a person travels from here to there, this distance in the same direction, and then he travels from here to there, two displacements. His total displacement will be from here to there because that's his initial position, that's his final position. His position has changed from initial to the final position and that's the sum of the displacement. What if I copied vector B first? Do you think A plus B equals to B plus A. Let's see, if we do B plus A, we would copy down vector B first. Exactly the same amount, same length, same direction. And then we put A, the tail of A, at the tip of B. Now this we started here, ended there, would be B plus A. Now if you compare carefully, you will see that they are exactly the same thing. So yes, they are equal, which means the vectors follow the commutative law of addition. The second method is called parallelogram method. If we use the parallelogram method to add the vectors A and B, we would also copy those vectors down, but we will put their tails together. So let me put A here, and then I copy down B, but putting their tails together. And then we use these two vectors to make a parallelogram. So I can do this. I make a parallelogram. The diagonal would be the sum. The diagonal has to have the tail together too. So the tail starts right here. So it's uh, this diagonal. And that is uh, A plus B. No, not that one. 
because all three vectors they have to have the tails together. And if you compare with this tail to tip method, this triangle is like the top one over here. That triangle is like the bottom one over here. So all three give you exactly the same results. So it really doesn't matter what method we use when we're adding vectors. However, when we break a vector into components, people usually use the parallelogram method. That's why when we look for the horizontal and vertical components of a slanted velocity like this, we would make a rectangle, which is a, a parallelogram. It's a rectangle just because we happen to have a 90 degree angle right here. The slanted velocity is the sum of these two components. They all have their tails together. If we add the horizontal component to the vertical component, we get the total velocity. If this is VOX, that's VOY. That means VO equals to VOX plus VOY. The diagonal is the sum of these two vectors, and all three of them have their tails right here together. Before we go on to the third method, Let's try another example. We have two vectors C and D. See if you can find a C plus D. So we first copy down vector C. Let's say it starts here, goes that way. And then I put the tail of D at the tip of C. So this is C, this is D, and then we started here, ended there, so that is the sum C plus D. Now if C has a magnitude of 5, and D has a magnitude of 8. Is the magnitude of C plus D 5 plus 8? No, they are not the same. Adding vectors is not the same as adding scalars. That's why we need to use these new methods to add vectors. The sum C plus D, as you can see, is smaller than the sum of 5 plus 8. This is less than 13. What if we add vectors of magnitudes 5 and 8 in any directions? What range of magnitude can we get for their sum? The sum cannot be more than 5 plus 8, 13, because at most you can have C and D in the same direction. 5 plus 8 equals to 13, that our sum goes like that. And the sum cannot be less than 8 minus 5, which is 3, because at least you can have C and D in the opposite direction. That's 8, that's 5. So you started here, ended there. You start there, end there. That is the sum, and this sum equals to 3. The third method is adding by components. If the vectors we're adding are given in the format of ordered pairs like these, adding by components can be very convenient. For example, in this case, what is E plus F? All we have to do is to add them by adding components. So E plus F would be its x component will be the sum of the two x components, 3 plus negative 4. 
the y component will be the sum of the two y components, 2 plus 1. So this gives you negative 1, 3. The reason why this works is because 3, 2, vector e goes that way. Negative 4, 1, negative 4, 1, vector f is this one. If I want to add f to e, I can copy f down right there. And I start here, e, and then f. So I started here, ended there. That means the sum goes that way, and that is negative 1, 3. Because for the x direction, at first I have 3, and then I have to add a negative 4. That's why I arrive at negative 1. That's why adding components work. A biker has two displacements. The first one is one kilometer to the east. And then two kilometers, 53 degrees south of east. What is the magnitude of the bike's total displacement? If we add these two vectors, tail to tip, we start here and there, so the total displacement would be a vector going that way. Now, of course, you can use a trig function to find the length of this displacement, the magnitude of the displacement, or you can use the adding components. This one completely is in the east direction. There is no south-north direction component. But this slanted one has two components, so we all have to find the components first. To find the component of this slanted vector, again, I have to make a parallelogram, or in this case, a rectangle. If I make a rectangle, that's the component to the east. This is the component to the south. The component to the east is adjacent to the angle, so it is the cosine component. That will be the hypotenuse 2 kilometers times the cosine 53 degrees. This happens to be 1.2 kilometers. The southward component is the same as the opposite side. So this one is 2 times the sine 53 degrees, which happens to be 1.6 kilometers. Now we can just add the components together. The total displacement will have two components. The first component, the east, the first one has 1, the second one has 1.2, so it's 1 plus 1.2, and that's the eastward component. For the southward component, the first one has none, the second one has 1.6 to the south. So your answer would be 2.2 east, 1.6 to the south. But we're not looking for the displacement. We want the magnitude of the displacement. If our displacement has an eastward component, that's 2.2, southward component, 1.6, what do you think the magnitude is? The magnitude of the total displacement would be, we have to add these two together using the parallelogram method. The diagonal is the sum. The magnitude of the total displacement is the magnitude of the diagonal. The diagonal will be square root of 1.6 squared plus 2.2 squared 
using the Pythagorean theorem, we can find the answer. And that will give us uh, about 2.7 kilometers. And that's the answer. Now let's work on vector subtraction. We have two vectors, A and B. This time, we want to find uh, A minus B. Since we have learned how to add vectors, we can just say a minus b equals to a plus negative b. See if you can find the answer. a plus negative b, a is a vector going that way. What do you think negative b is? b goes this way. If it's a negative b, that means uh, it's the same length but opposite direction. So this one is a, this one is negative b. Now if I add them tail to tip, I would have to put a down first and then put the tail of negative b at the tip of a. So this is negative b and the sum would be starting here ending there that is a plus negative b which is a minus b